Hello. Welcome to Data in the TC world. So we've already made excellent progress on monopolizing data. Since 2020, we've already 3x the number of features and 4x the number of rows in the data set. But thanks to true contribution, we can take all of this a step further. So I've added another layer to this diagram, and that's the data layer. So the data layer actually feeds into the model layer, and it actually dictates what the models are even capable of learning. And that's what we want to focus on. In a true contribution world, the tournament and the hedge fund are perfectly aligned. So the data, team, the data team can focus on this one job, and that's giving the users everything they need to be able to maximize their true contribution. So I'm going to talk about two ways that we're working on doing this. The first way is giving more data, and the second way is sharing more ideas. So first, let's just talk about giving more data. Giving more data is good because with more data, you can make better models, and you can make more diverse models, which is what your contribution needs. Numerai has always held out a portion of the data, and that's this test set. And what that is is basically it's like a six-year recent period where we don't give out targets, so users actually can't build models on that data. And what we do is we actually ask users to predict on that data, and then we can tell, we can look at that and try to guess how good the users are going to be going forward. So that's good for us. It's cool for a lot of reasons. But it means that every single model in Numerai right now is missing six important years of data. So instead of keeping that data for ourselves, what if we just give that data out so that users can tell for themselves how good they're going to be going forward? That's why we're releasing the V4 data set. In addition to adding over 100 new features, all of the targets that Numerai has for all periods are going to be available for training. So this means models will have over 50% more data to train on. Additionally, the newest data will be continuously released every week. So this data set, as big as it is, is going to continue to grow. So here's some performance improvements with each of the new data sets. The green line is a model built on the old V2 data. The orange line in the middle is a model built on the V3 data set. Uh, and neither of these lines have any exposure to the test set. The blue line is a model built on the newest V4 data set, and it's been continuously retrained every year with the newest data that's available. So what you can see is that early on, the blue line outperforms by a tiny bit, but as more and more data gets added going forward, it continues to outperform more and more. So as more and more data comes out, uh, we can expect this line to continue to have more and more outperformance. Okay, so the main benefit of this data release uh, is having more data. But there's also like, some interesting models that you can make that were never possible before. So for example, say you think that the most recent data is uh, more relevant and more predictive of the current data than data, say, from 20 years ago. So one crazy thing you can do is actually just download the newest data every week and build a model that's only trained like the most recent six months of data. Now, We've tried to do this before. We've had ideas. There's some reasons to think this could be good. We haven't been able to crack it yet. But there's nothing stopping users from trying this now. And if you can crack this, if you can figure out a model like this, there's probably a lot of TC to be made from it. OK, so aside from sharing more data, how else can we help users get true contribution? Some ideas we can do are we can share more modeling ideas. Uh, we can make the user research experience better. And we can give more feedback on models. Right now, this is done in a lot of different places. So we have the forum where we occasionally post new modeling ideas. We have a diagnostics module, which you can submit some predictions on and get some feedback on a subset of the data. And we have the example scripts repository, where you can go, you can basically see some examples of how to generate some simple predictions on the data. The problem with having all this, all this information in a lot of different places is it's hard to make sense of it all, it's hard to get it all, and it's hard to even find that. Um, the best example of it being like hard to find is, it's in the bottom right here. There's actually a profile uh, that a lot of you guys will recognize. It's the Integration Test 7 profile. Um, and you might know about it because we use it to track the V3 dataset performance. Um, but, and there's a lot of cool information on this, on this uh, page. But in order to find that, like the process of steps you have to go through is insane. You basically have to stumble upon this model on the leaderboard, ignore that it has no profile picture, Ignore that it's called integration test seven, which is obviously like for Numerai engineers testing stuff. Even if you go there, uh, you have to look at the description uh, where it says 
you know, submits new example scripts. There's no links to get to the example script. You have to find those separately. Um, I mean, it's just crazy, the things you have to go through here. Um, what we need is, we just need you to be able to know, hey, there's this model, it's super easy to make, it has a lot of TC, and it's made almost 100% returns over the last year. And if everyone had access to this information, it would make the user research process so much better, and it would make the meta model way better. So that's why I'm so excited to talk about benchmark models. <laughs> so benchmark models is a new feature that will consolidate all of the example scripts, as well as a lot of other new modeling ideas, uh, into one convenient place. So what we're going to do is generate tens and eventually hundreds of new models. Uh, they'll all be open source. They'll be backfilled for all of time, including true contribution. And the predictions of them will be available in the API each week. So if you've ever wondered like, what kind of true contribution a simple model built on the new data would have, uh, it would be impossible to find that right now yourself because you can't backfill true contribution. But in this world, before the data even comes out, we could publish all the predictions for the new data set um, and all of its scores. And you could compare your existing models to it. You could try blending those predictions with your model and see if it helps. And you know what you want to do with the new data set before it even gets released. So what are some other ways that we think users could use benchmark models? One way I imagine is, like, say you're a new user or you're a user that's coming back after, uh, after a bit of a break. So right now, what you might want to do is go to the forum, look at some of the most you know, recent ideas, some of the best ideas. You go on the forum, you see there's error boosting, there's people who are doing UMAP feature augmentation now, there's new data sets, there's all this crazy stuff. Um, so maybe you find like 10, 20, 30 of the most promising ones and build some, try to reproduce them yourself, build some models on them, start submitting them every week. Um, and then after a few months or a year, you see which ones have been working the best and you decide which ones you're actually going to stake on. With benchmark models, all of that information will already be available for you in a table like this. And the predictions will already be available for downloading. So like for your first model, you could even do something like go to the, t go to the uh, benchmark models page, sort the table by true contribution, take like the 10 highest true contribution benchmark models, and you could just download those and make your own personal meta model out of that and just submit that every week. And that's probably going to be a sick model. So yeah, instead of recreating all this research, all these people trying to build the same ideas from the forum, you can just have access to this vast library of knowledge. And it kind of skips this whole two-year onboarding period. Um, you can just quickly reach the bleeding edge of Numerai modeling techniques and start pushing the envelope further than ever before. Let me quickly explain the idea of what a type 4 hedge fund is. In short, this is the best possible hedge fund. It has a signal which you can make no profitable alterations to. So true contribution builds toward this directly, builds towards this directly by basically rewarding you for finding any profitable alterations to the signal. The data team's ultimate responsibility is to give users all of the resources they need to continue finding the necessary alterations to the signal. And this brings us to the ultimate benchmark model, and this is stake weighted meta model. This chart shows performances over the last year or so, um, all the user performances over the last year, and they all combine to make the top bright white line, and that's the stake weighted meta model. This is the signal which you all contribute to, and this is the signal you're all tasked with altering. So I think you should all be able to observe this signal directly. So along with the various benchmark models, also going to be releasing the scores and predictions of the stake weighted meta model every week. So yeah, just think about how valuable this could be for people who are trying to improve the meta model, trying to increase their true contribution. The whole premise of the master plan is that users are all working to alter this signal. And like something you can do with this is you can download the predictions for the stake weighted meta model for the last you know, X number of weeks. And you can actually see what, it would, what would happen to that signal if you staked like an extra 10% on one of your models. You can see exactly how that would change the stake weighted meta model and decide if that's going to help you get more true contribution or not. OK, just wrapping up. 
the ultimate goal of the data team is to unblock the Numeri users as they create the perfect hedge fund. So if the users have all of the data in the world, if they have all of the best modeling ideas in the world, and if they have access to the existing best model in the world, then it's only a matter of time before Numeri builds a type four hedge fund. So now we've talked about giving out all the data that we do have. The next question is how can we push that even further? Um, so we have to ask, can we start giving out all the data that we don't have? So with that, I'm gonna bring Michael Oliver back to the stage, and he's gonna talk about synthetic data. So even if we give you all the data that we have for the stock market, there's still only about three decades worth of stock market data. It's not clear, is that enough to achieve alien superintelligence? We wanna give you a thousand or a million years of data. How much could that help? How could we perform with unlimited data? We can get a hint from AlphaGo Zero. It achieves superhuman performance by playing against itself, game after game, seeing every possible way games can evolve and change, and adapting to all of them. This is a general principle. This works in many games, increasing the amount of data and seeing all the paths that the things can evolve allows you to achieve, uh, anticipate and plan for all of them. Unfortunately, the real world is much less constrained than these games. Everything that has happened is not everything that could happen. But to, so to generate fake data or synthetic data and achieve alien superintelligence, we need a way to generate realistic potential future states of the world. So synthetic data is really samples from probability distributions. So there's a couple different ways we can look at this. We can take samples of the probability distribution of possible features to create realistic measurements of the world. Features are basically just measures of different properties of companies in the world. And we can think of, if we can have a distribution of that, we can create samples of it. We could also create samples of how the features map on the returns at any given time. There may be a distribution we can sample from that allows us to see all the different ways that all the features you measure in the world can relate to returns. And solving the full problem is the joint distribution of all the features and returns. So it, ideally, we'd like to be able to sample the sort of full joint distribution. Well, how do we do this? In some domains, sampling the features is relatively easy to create more data. You can augment your data with images by rotating, flipping, uh, scaling, sharing images, they're all a lion. You can train, but and you can make your image classifier much better by giving it all these versions of a lion. But there's no easy transforms like this you can perform with stock market data. One of our users, Newton, who's here, had the idea to use deep dream type technique on Numeri data. The idea here is basically you take a trained neural network, and in, in this case, an image classifier network, and you can basically update the input images to act, make it activate certain parts of the network more highly. It's a way of adding structured noise to your input, but the structure you're adding has been learned from the data, and so in some ways it's realistic. And this sort of approach isn't limited to images. You can basically apply this to any sort of data you can train a neural network on. And he's sh uh, shown that you can do this with Numeri data and actually get some encouraging results. For trying to sample from the distribution of how returns relate to features, uh, you could fit, say, a linear model from features to returns in each era, and then look, create a latent representation of this relationship. And then you could, so what you can see here is the three-dimensional latent space of, of these mappings across all the eras. And you can see these sort of filament structures, and there are continuous eras of how this relationship evolves over time. You could imagine sampling different paths th through the space to create relationships that could have existed but haven't yet. To solve the full problem, the same user also attempted just to put all the features and all the return data into a latent space. And, but when you do that, you see just kind of a big potato blob. It's, there's, a lot of, there's not much structure that's obvious in here, and it's sort of unclear if sampling this would be particularly effective. We need better ways to learn the structure. This is an incredibly complex probability distribution, and it's gonna be a tough nut to crack. 
I mean, there's many approaches you can take. You can sort of try to learn the factorized uh, representation of this distribution. Uh, there's been recent advances in neural network architectures that are a great fit for learning these kind of things. And we'd love to hear your ideas and collaborate to, to so solve this problem. But our goal is to give you virtually infinite data to help us build the alpha zero of hedge funds. So with that, we're gonna take a five minute break and then we're gonna hear from the community. Thank you.